Hey guys, it's Life with Eva, welcome back. And today we are going to be reading the fifth chapter of Lost and Found. So I know you're all eager, and let's get started now. Lost and Found, chapter five. Charlie's acting funny, Timmy announced as he plopped into his chair at the kitchen table. He grabbed Emily's glass of chocolate milk. Hey, that's mine. Emily took her glass back. Get your own. But she passed him the chocolate mix before putting her empty plate in the dishwasher and opening the back door to let Sherlock out into the fenced yard. Sunlight pushed through the trees with heavy with red and yellow leaves, casting shadows on the ground. Sherlock chased the blowing leaves, growling and barking. Emily grinned at her puppy as she made sure he and Charlie had water in their outside bowls. Hey, are we having school today? According to the news, yes. Principal Sturgeon said some of the high school classes would be held in the junior high wings, but that he would hold an assembly first thing this morning. Dad took another sip of his coffee. Charlie's acting funny. Naomi turned from the stove, still holding the spatula tipped with pancake batter. How? Timmy dumped two large tablespoons of chocolate mix into his glass of milk. He was twitching around and wouldn't come downstairs with me. Emily, will you watch this pancake for me, please? Naomi flipped the pancake, handed Emily the spatula, and rushed up the stairs. What do you mean by twitching around? Emily asked Timmy. I don't know, Timmy shrugged, like his feet sometimes do when he's sleeping and dreaming of chasing a squirrel, only it was kind of his whole body and he wasn't asleep. Her mouth went dry as she locked stairs with her father. That did not sound good. I'm sure he's fine, honey, but Dad looked worried himself as he took a sip of coffee. Don't let the pancake burn. Emily scooped it up and slid it onto a plate that she handed to Timmy. She made sure to turn off the stove and move the griddle to the back burner. Donovan! The fear in Naomi's voice carried down the stairs. Dad kicked back his chair, nearly knocking it over, and rushed out of the room. Emily's heart pounded. Stay here with Matthew, she told Timmy before running to the stairs. In the hallway, Dad had his cell to his ear as he kept a hand on Naomi's shoulder. Naomi knelt alongside Charlie just outside Timmy's room. Charlie wasn't shaking or anything as Emily approached, so that had to be good. Right? The smell indicated he'd peed on the floor, and he was drooling as Naomi used a tissue to wipe around his eyes, which when he stared up at Emily looked so sad. What's wrong with him? I don't know. Dad's talking to Dr. Meeks right now. Naomi stroked his head. He leaned against her. But he's going to be all fine, right? Emily couldn't imagine something being bad wrong with him. Naomi's eyes were shiny with tears as she shrugged. We'll have to wait to hear what Dr. Meek says, but we should pray. Emily nodded. Dear God, please don't let anything really bad be wrong with Charlie. We all love him so much. She couldn't imagine how she'd feel if it were Sherlock. And Naomi had owned Charlie long before she married Dad. Dad put his cell in his pocket. Dr. Meeks said to bring Charlie in now. He'll meet you there. Naomi pressed her lips together until white ringed them, and she nodded, but she kept petting Charlie's head. I'll get him in the SUV. Don't worry about the kids. We'll get everyone where they're supposed to be, right, Em? Dad turned to her and gave her big eyes, clearly urging her to reassure Naomi. Right, I'll get the boys ready and make sure that they have their backpacks and lunches. Naomi stood and Dad gently lifted Charlie in his arms. They went down the stairs together, Emily following. Timmy met them in the foyer with Matthew right behind him. What's wrong with Charlie? His voice cracked. Is he gonna be okay? Emily wrapped an arm around his shoulders and pulled him in for a sideways hug. He's going to see Dr. Meeks. You know what great care Dr. Meeks takes care of Charlie. So he'll be okay? Timmy's eyes looked as sad as Charlie's had. I'm praying he'll be just fine. 
I'll pray too. Naomi turned and kissed all three of them, grabbed her purse from the table in the entry, and then followed Dad outside. Lord, please keep watch over Charlie. Let him be okay. Please. She let out a heavy sigh and let go of Timmy. Come on, let's get ready for school. Dad's going to take us. Think he'll let us listen to sports talk on the way to school? Timmy headed to the stairs without waiting for an answer. Take Matthew with you. Make sure he brushes his teeth. Emily smiled at her baby brother, who seemed more than happy to trail Timmy. He followed his brother everywhere, trying to copy everything Timmy did or said. Hey, Timmy, Emily called up the stairs after them. Charlie had an accident in the hallway. Please stay away from it until I can get it cleaned up. And keep Matthew out of it too, please. Okay. Emily put all the dirty dishes into the dishwasher and had just finished putting the chairs up to the table when Dad came back. She leaned against the counter. I turned off the coffee pot. I figured you were done with it. The boys are upstairs brushing their teeth. Thanks, sweetheart. She reached into the supply cabinet and pulled out the pine cleaner. What are you doing with that? Charlie's accident upstairs. I don't think Naomi had time to disinfect the area. You don't have to do that, honey. I'll get it. Dad reached for the cleaning bottle. Emily took a step back. No, it's fine. I just want to get it done so Naomi doesn't have to do it when she gets back. Well, thank you. It's very considerate. She turned to head to the stairs, then paused. Dad, is Charlie going to be okay? Dr. Meeks said he'd probably have to run some tests to find out what's wrong. Then he'll be able to figure out a treatment plan. But he'll be okay? Dad paused, and Emily's heart hiccuped. I don't know yet, honey. I hope so. I'm praying so. But I honestly don't know yet. She nodded and headed up the stairs. On one hand, it was great her dad trusted her enough to tell the truth. But on the other... It was rough because it meant she knew the situation with Charlie was serious. Serious enough that Naomi and Dad were worried. And that meant she was worried, too. You don't know any more than that? Olivia stared at Emily. Emily shook her head. As more students filled the bleachers in the gym, she leaned closer to Olivia so the others couldn't hear their conversation. We packed up the dogs and left right after that, so I have no idea what the sheriff did with the jacket. But I know I've seen it somewhere before. I just can't remember who I saw wearing it. She shivered. And then for Charlie to be so sick this morning. Well, I don't even know what to think. That's a little freaky. I, everyone take a seat and quiet down. Principal Sturgeon's voice boomed over the speakers in the school's gym. All of the high school and junior high students went still and silent. The bleachers were filled, kids squished together. Emily could make out Casey and Trevor, two rows in front of her. Thank you. The principal pulled the microphone from the holder and began to pace. As I'm sure you're all aware, we will be moving some of the classes that had rooms damaged by last night's fire. Any classrooms in the east wing of the science lab will be moved. A full listing of new class locations will be handed out by Miss Bridges as you leave the assembly. Whispers grew louder from the bleachers, as did individual voices. Casey turned around and caught Emily's eye. Have you heard anything, she mouthed. Emily shook her head. Casey turned back around. Excuse me. Principal Sturgeon waited until everyone had quieted down again. Sheriff Kaleva and Fire Chief Dix have taped off areas with yellow caution tape. No one, and I mean no one, is to cross into these areas. Anyone who does will receive immediate suspension. Mumblings came up from the upper row of the bleachers where the seniors sat. This is not up for discussion, students. Do I make myself clear? A chorus of yes and okay and a couple of yes sirs filled the air. Principal Sturgeon nodded. If you'll give your attention to Sheriff Kaleva, he has an announcement. Emily hadn't noticed him standing among the gathered teachers on the gym floor, but he stepped up and took the microphone from the principal. He set a duffel bag on the floor beside him. Hello, students. 
I'm very sorry for the damage to your school, but rest assured we're looking into what caused the fire. Only a few boys in the back made noise, and those were only clearing their throats and coughing. We know a person or persons broke into the science lab where the fire started. It could have been a prank. The fire could have been an accident. We understand these things can happen. The sheriff let his words sink in for a minute, but we need to know what happened, and that's why I'm here today, to ask for your help. He opened the duffel bag and pulled out a clear bag holding the blue fleece jacket they'd found in the locker room last night. Emily grabbed Olivia's hand. That's the one Samson found, she whispered. We have reason to believe the person who broke into the science lab was wearing this jacket. We are asking the person who owns it to come forward and answer a few questions. He walked across the bleachers, holding up the bag with the jacket. The room went silent as Emily had ever heard. You don't have to come right this minute, but I'll be in the office for about 30 minutes after the assembly. If this is your jacket or you know whose it is, please report to the office right after you're dismissed. Thank you. The sheriff handed the microphone back to Principal Sturgeon and put the jacket back into the duffel. He left the gym without another word. Students, I feel sure the owner of the jacket will report to the office immediately after the assembly. However, I have made the decision that if no one does come forward to claim the jacket, or no one with information about the jacket comes forward, I'll have no choice but to cancel the homecoming celebration this weekend. Everyone seemed to speak at once. Students loudly protested the principal's ruling. Others began to talk and whisper to each other. Excuse me. Principal Sturgeon spoke loudly into the microphone. I hope it doesn't come to that, but that's the choice of the owner of the jacket and his friends. He paused as people continued to mumble, although not as loudly. Don't forget to get the new class location and schedule from Miss Bridges as you leave. You are dismissed. Please report to your second period class. The gym erupted in noise as everyone got up and headed down the bleachers to go to class. I can't believe it. Cancel the homecoming celebration? Olivia stood, shaking her head. I know. Emily couldn't believe it herself. It's so unfair. The whole town gets involved, not just us kids. Olivia shifted her backpack as they made their way down the bleachers. Yeah, Dad's been helping the committee with some of the booths. They've just finished all the repairs on the dunking booth. Grandma's been collecting items for the silent auction for at least a month. She got some really neat things, too. Emily shook her head. This wasn't good. The SmackDown team was planning on doing a demonstration. We've been practicing for weeks. Miss Cantola had made them study Rock Harbor history just for the exhi exhibition. I hope whomever that jacket belongs to goes to see the sheriff. Casey stood waiting at the bottom of the bleachers. Can you believe this? Emily hesitated. Why was Casey being so friendly to her? Emily had volunteered to help with the school surf team for a few weeks at the start of the school year, but Casey was a senior, and she hadn't said much to Emily since then. It's a shock. I heard you and your mom were out searching with those dogs. That's pretty cool. Ah, uh, that explained it. This morning's newscast had not only reported the fire, but had shown Bree and Naomi and Emily in a short video clip about the police working the investigation. Yeah, but that's all Emily offered. Casey and Trevor moved up in the line at the exit. Miss Bridges did her best to hand out sheets to the mass of students crowding her. Oh, I texted Annetta last night. She's going to meet us at the cafe after school. So at lunch, call your mom and let her know you're coming home with me after school. Did you tell Annetta why you wanted to meet? Olivia looked a little pale. No, I figured we'd tell her together. Olivia licked her lips. I'm still a little nervous about telling anyone. She glanced around, then lowered her voice even more. I can't shake the feeling that there's a reason Mom and Dad never told me. Emily didn't reply. What could she say? 
Maybe Mr. and Mrs. Webster did have a good reason for keeping Olivia's adoption a secret. But then again, maybe they didn't. I guess there wasn't an email response from Charlotte Tarver, huh? Emily shook her head. Sorry, but maybe today. The girls took the sheet Miss Bridges handed them and spilled out of the gym with all the other junior and senior high students. A slight stench of smoke still ling lingered in the breezeway, but the school grounds had been picked up since Emily saw it last. Some serious cleaning crews must have worked overtime to get the school ready for classes today. Well, we can't exactly contact the attorney offices ourselves. Emily scanned the sheet. Oh, look, yearbook staff has been moved to the school library so the senior high math class can use our classroom. At least my morning classes didn't change location. Olivia folded the paper and stuck it in her notebook. What about yours? Just science, but only moving down three rooms. Guess to make space for the high school science classes. Okay, I'll see you at lunch. Olivia shifted her backpack again. Yeah, and don't forget to call your mom and tell her you're coming over to my place for after school so we can meet Anetta. Okay, but Olivia sounded as depressed and upset as she had yesterday and the day before. Emily gripped her backpack tighter and headed in the opposite direction. It was time she moved into high gear to find out the truth about Olivia's adoption. Her best friend needed answers, and Emily was determined to provide them whether Olivia wanted to hear them or not. And that's the end of Chapter 5 of Lost and Found. Come back next time to listen to Chapter 6. Goodbye!